Let's really quickly go through unified model for any angle. Okay. We actually go through the the core calculation of it. The part that we didn't did not discuss much is about closure relationship. Today we will finish that. Talk about giant unified model and then end of this course. Okay? Hopefully we can end it today. Alright, Gomez's law is a model that can be used for any angle. It is a combination of several other models. They tell how to select what to use to make it good for any angle. Okay. Uh, I think in 2014 there's an exam about pressure drop calculation for 45 degree slug flow. Okay. If you have that case, what are you going to do? Of course, you use Gomez at all, right? It varies for any angle. Uh, everything is good, so we, we talk about the transition A, the transition that is used in Gomez at all, right? And how they calculate each flow pattern. So if it's stratified, they calculate it like a stratified flow. It just have different way of like the closure relationship. Okay, slab flow model, uh, closure relationship for slab flow model. So this equation is what they use in Gomez and all. Okay, it's the same the one that you have in Tito Bani. So for VGSL or VGLS. The next one. This one, if you open your, uh, uh, show hand page two hundred forty-two. Uh, it has to be three inch. So this is a closure relationship used for slug flow. So they have VGLS, okay, HLS, HLTB. So they are the same as Tito Bani, right? Pretty much the same. The difference is, it is an approximation, it is a case 3. What is case 3? Uniform film thickness. Oh, I never did it, I'm sorry. So case 3, uniform film thickness. Uniform film thickness means the numerator, can you look at this equation? The numerator in Tito Bani, in your book, which page? Are you stop doing the page number thing? Long time ago. Uh, I think two years ago we had the exam about like open book and the student just write the page number of equation in two days. <laughs> oh, that was good. But the, the final exam is closed book, right? <laughs> so if you look at the page, uh, one hundred and two the H by the Z the H by the H F by the Z that you typically saw by RKF forty five or domain prints. The top portion of it, if you set it equal to zero, that is equilibrium film profile. Right? And what I circle here is that top part. How do you solve this equation in the test room? Without Excel, you have to use your calculator. Victor, how do you to solve it? With the calculator and iterative, I gave value for the film until that. <laughs> Unless you pre-program it. Okay. Because what? SF has a long equation. Everything is just a function of HF, right? Everything is just a function of height, but it's a long expression. So most likely, you will have, okay, input HF, your program internally, calculate tau F, calculate SF, calculate AF, and then calculate left-hand side. So you set HF tilde to be 0.5, find out if the left-hand side is more than zero or less than zero, and try 0.6, Try point seven, maybe try point four, and find out which point that make left hand side equal to zero. You will get the exact answer. Uh, if you decide to solve this equation, yeah, 
Why not? See, if you pre-program it, it, it's very easy. I mean, um, if you pre-program it correctly, it takes about um, three minutes to guess, to write the equation down, guess the value of H tilde, put different value in, and get the value, 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 and find out which case that give you close to zero. For example, if you put 0.5 in, you get like minus 10,000 or minus 100. You put 0.6 in, you get about 10. So you know that the answer is between 0.5 and 0.6, right? Mm. Okay. okay. If you decide to not solve it, how are you going to do it in the exam room? Let's go back to year 2014 where we have 45 degree upward slab floor, and students are asked to calculate pressure drop in final exam. Okay. How are you going to give me pressure drop per unit length for slab floor, 45 degree upward? Can we use the... If you don't solve this. You, we have the plus, the chart, or not? Let's say you have the book. Oh. Okay, so we can... Uh, Calculate x and y and find the equilibrium. How do you know the film thickness? You calculate x and y of what? Uh, film with, zone? With, with the in film zone, you, you don't have VSL in a film zone, do you? Yeah, but we know the superficial velocities. You know VSL total. Did I, did I click record? Did it's it have a red line? Yeah. How do you know how much is a VSL in the film zone? In the film zone. That is VLTB, right? Typically we get VLTB after we know the height. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if we don't, if we cannot calculate that, I will <laughs> use the the chart for the chart do what? How do you calculate capital X? The, the, the film. How do you calculate capital X? Well, that capital X for the film zone cannot be calculated through the given VSL because the given VSL is the VSL of the whole slab, but it's not the VSL of the film zone. It's not the same. So you only use the relationship for X, VSL, or oh, VL. TB minus VTB multiplied by H LTB equal to HLS multiplied by VS minus VTB. Is that what you want to look? Is that what you want to use? That mass balancing? You cannot cheat. Okay. I mean, we cannot do better than this unless. We use more closure relationship. Make sense? What is the closure relationship that Gomez uses? Okay, Gomez for slab flow, they have length LS, right? They have LS. They have HLS, VTB, VTLS. That is the same as cytopathy. So we have two options. Option one, use slug length LS as a closure relationship. Option two, use slug frequency. You remember that? If we use both, okay, and we happen to solve this equation too, I mean the full form or the, even the equilibrium film thickness. If we use both and we solve for that film thickness, the film thickness that we got will not give you a mass balance. Make sense? So that, that's why they use only one. If they use slug length, they do not use slug frequency. If they use slug frequency, they do not use slug length. So that they solve this equation. So option three, if you don't solve this equation, you use both slug length and slug frequency. Assume field profile is Uniform, no, no shape. 
it's just a straight line, then everything, the mass balance equation will be a lot more easy. Then you can solve it. So what does it mean to you exactly? Right closure relationship for slug frequency in your sheet sheet. Is that exact? What do you have to do? Or even better, put it in your calculator. You may notice that this won't work. How long does it take to do it? 15 minutes or something? Six. Yeah, last one work. <coughs> How long does it take for you to do it, Victor? Uh, the calculation, about one hour, but the plotting, it was kind of weird. Not six hours. No. Because the rest of the time is for you to put the equation in your calculator. Write your sheet sheet. Okay. The rule of the exam is already in the syllabus. All right, that's the and all use in the exam. If you happen to not be able to solve the numerator equal to zero, then you may use more closure relationship. And you, based on the assumption that mass conserve, then you can get the right height, the film height. You can get it by saying, okay, mass is conserved. Or you actually get HLL. Uh, HLTB. What am I talking about? Okay, let's talk about it later and maybe we'll review it a little bit. Um, so that's this page. Actually, we go through it already. That is for slab flow. And slab flow, they do always model. Okay, that's a closure relationship that they use. Okay, for bubble flow, they use Hassan Kirby for void fraction calculation, so it's a little bit more accurate. And then after they get the void fraction, get the weighted average for fluid property, then calculate it like single phase flow. Good? Can you do this one? Really? What's the unit of sigma? Newton per meter or millinewton per meter? You see that sigma over there? Newton per meter. Newton per meter. Okay, did you try? Does it give you a like, good answer? The objective of this course is to calculate pressure drop by unit length. We have limited number of flow pattern. So we have annular flow, slug flow, bubble flow, this bubble flow, stratified flow, Within those things, you have to calculate pressure drop by unit length. And if you work with me, pre-program it, you go into the exam room, five minutes, you can get out. Done. <laughs> okay. But I think I make my exam in such a way that you cannot cheat. So this means, regardless of how good you are, it's not going to be done in like half an hour or something. It will take some time so that you cannot cheat, okay? We already show that that model is good, okay? Any question for commerce at all, except the slug flow, like how you do it in exam. So how do you do analog flow in exam, if there's an exam about analog flow? Follow our best model. What is the crucial relationship in the analog flow model? There are a couple of them. Okay. Do you need to write it? Yes, because I don't give it. You will be asked for sure to calculate pressure drop per unit length. But I don't tell you which flow pattern. Maybe I say like three out of five. So but we studied another flow for a while. What else can it be? <laughs> Stratified flow, we did it already. This bubble flow, yeah, that's a kind of single phase flow. Slug flow, we didn't do it much. So there's just two of them, slug flow and another flow, that you really need to know how to calculate pressure of a unit length in the exam with your calculator, pre-programmed calculator. This means closure relationship, yes, you need to write it in. I don't give it to you. I just say, hey, I open, look, I open show handbook, select, show you the graph. Hey, here's the graph. At that point of VSL, VSC, it showed that it's a 
Another flow. Tell me what is the pressure of pressure in length. Give you fluid property. Very easy to make an exam. But do you need to practice? Yeah. And you have more than we have. What is the exam time? How? Seven thirty. Oh. What is the exam time? Dash. Seven thirty. What day? Next Friday. Maybe we maybe we say December seventh. That's like oh, it's in December. It's next Friday. Okay. All right. We talk about always model. This closure relationship. Yeah, I don't see why you cannot write this because I type it. Okay. Has entropy. Okay, another flow pattern that should be in the test. Maybe this one is too easy, I don't like it, but okay. Bubble flow. Oh, how do you solve this equation? This equation has alpha over here, right? That's alpha, and alpha over there. How do you solve this equation in the test? By session method. Okay. What is the probable value of alpha? Zero to one, right? So if you pre-program in your calculator, this equation is not that long. So if you pre-program based on the given value of sigma, and this one, you don't have some other way to do it, okay? Hasn't created one that accurate. So if you pre-program it in your calculator, you move everything, you move everything to left hand side. And you say, hey, alpha equal to 0.5. What is the left hand side value? Alpha equal to 0.6. What's the left hand side value? So if you end up like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and the value of left hand side is like this. So this means, you will know that it's somewhere between 0.5 and 0.8, and then you can go more accurate, right? And it's, it's just a matter of click, or just press a button to get this value, if you pre-program it. I think you should. It doesn't mean that this will be in the exam. It is more likely. More likely than what? More likely than transient A, transient B, transient C, because they're covered already. Right. There will be several questions that is straightforward because I want to test who know and who don't know. It should not be difficult so that if you know, you pass. If you don't know, maybe see me next semester or something. <laughs> okay? All right, that's unified bubble flow. We already showed this, we showed this. Let's talk about giant unified model. This model is pretty neat. It works for any angle. Okay. It's unified. Um, it's developed in Tulsa. We have continuity equation. Equation number one, equation number two. This is for what? Liquid phase. This is for gas phase. Do you recognize this equation at all? Where does this come from? Which page number? Or oh, is a new equation that uh, Hoden Chan just popped it up from his head? Where does this come from? Which page number? Many w. You remember equation about W? W sub L. What is W sub L? How about we look at this? Okay. Light on. You see this equation, W sub L. Okay. If you say we have uniform film thickness, 
This means we change from integration to multiplication. So if we have uniform fitting thickness, all these parameter can be taken out from the integration. Integration of 0 to LF of 1 equal to LF, right? WL is VSL multiplied by what? AP multiplied by density, right? If you divided the whole thing by density and pipe area, the left hand side will be VSL. Right hand side will be VLLS multiplied by LS over LU plus VLTB multiplied by LF over LU. Is it the same as this? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's mass balance. It's page 100. You just have to move that over there. So it's a, it's not like phrasing method, it's a method that considers velocity, right? VL, VSL is a weighted average of velocity of liquid in the film and velocity of liquid in the, in the slug body. Weighted average based on length. So that's a mass balance equation that you already studied in page 100. Do you need to write that equation in? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so we do the same thing. We get that for liquid phase. I don't have time to give the unified model as a homework. So how do I deliver what I promised in the syllabus? There are three methods to act to like access you to test if you know this or not. Method number one is a quiz, but method number two is a homework, number three is an exam. So you just have exam. So this is very likely to be in the exam. Very likely. I mean, like, at least you need to know how to do the derivation, or know part of it something. All right, the top one is WL equal to something the bottom one is WG equal to something, it's the same as page 100. What about mass conservation? What is this expression? Have you ever seen it before? Yes. Which page number? Huh? You don't have book. Is this about X? Same thing, page 100. It's about X, right? Do you remember X? Oh, yeah. I have to show it. You see this equation? X equal to VTP minus VLLS multiplied by rho and AP. HLLS equal to this. A, uh, HLTB. So, uh, holding chunk just delete. No. Divide both sides by a rho L and AP. So, it's an X equation. Pick up mass pickup rate. Shedding rate. Okay. Then we have the top equation, mass conservation, pick up rate equal to shedding rate. The same thing for the gas phase. Gas pick up rate equal to gas checking rate. It's the X G. The top one is X L. I mean pick up rate. So do you need to have this equation? Or do you do I need to give it to you? No, I don't. It's already in the book. Okay? It's already, it is already in the book. Let's take a look at giant unified model. Momentum balance, or kind of force balance. External force is the rate of change in momentum. Momentum out minus momentum in divided by delta T. That is external force. Uh, I can do MV in minus MV out, everything divided by delta T equal to force to the environment. So M over T is what? M dot. M dot is mass per unit time, or pickup rate, changing rate. Okay. And this is another X thing. This momentum balance we do it in liquid film. Okay. When I look at liquid part, what are the momentum 
that do anything with the liquid part. Okay, let's let's take a look at the force. So rate of momentum coming in minus rate of momentum coming out equal to momentum accumulation uh, or rate of momentum accumulation or, or force or external force, right? In minus out equal to accumulation. So what is the force related to this? You see tau I S I L F? What is that? Shear stress coming from the gas phase acted on liquid phase. S I what is S I over there? Yes? Oh okay, 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 okay. I said what is S I over there? Length of this parameter. Length. What's it? In the unit of meter is a flat. If they assume that it's flat, it's flat. So LF is another length. Modified together is the surface area that gas phase acted on the liquid phase. Shear stress has a unit of Pascal. So tau multiplied by A is force, right? So this is a force that gas phase acted on the liquid phase. So in the picture, gas phase move faster Right? So this is pulling liquid forward to the plus Z direction. That's why I have plus sign and tau I S I L F. Good? So that's why that term comes. What about the shear stress on that part? Shear stress on that part would be tau F S F L F. S F is curved part, weighted parameter. L F is the length of the liquid film. Multiply together, we get like a surface that the shear stress from the wall acted on the liquid, right? Okay, this is the force that drag the liquid down to minus Z, so I put minus sign over there, then I put it over there. Good. What about mass? Mass is volume multiplied by density multiplied by G sine theta. What is G sine theta? G sine theta is what? I have G this direction, right? I have theta this direction. G sine theta is minus Z. So mass will be rho multiplied by volume is length AP HLTB. So this is mass and then G sine theta minus sign because it goes to the negative sign. Then I have this term. What about pressure? Pressure falls is the pressure from outside acted on the control volume. So pressure from outside is what? We have pressure at point one and pressure at point two. Pressure at point one, so it's acted this way, right? So it's positive sign. Pressure at point one is pressure multiplied by area. So I have P1 multiplied by area is AP HLTB. I'm tired. I think when I discuss this much, it should be the exam. Like free point for you to do this whole derivation. How about it? Very good. Draw your own picture. Come up with the Chinese fine model. Not promise, but I, I like to give this as a appreciation that you come to class every time. <laughs> it will take some time to, to derive it. All right, pressure from point one is pressure multiplied by area. Area is APH LTB. Okay. Pressure at point two is AP HLTB P2. So that's why P1 is positive, P2 is negative. Okay. Even better you just write this equation in your sheet sheet. Okay. Well, um, you know it already how to do this. So we have this term, no problem. We have this term, this term, this term. Okay, there are two more. How much is the momentum coming in? So momentum coming in has to be m dot multiplied by v in, right? So we think that on this side, on the left side, there's mass coming in, but there's not. 
you know that if we use the moving coordinate system, everything flow backward because VTB is fastest, right? But if we think that it's mass coming in, that mass will be negative value because actually it's a mass going out. Right? So we have X. Is that X? Rho H A delta. It's like minus X, right? That is kind of minus X. X multiplied by V. That is m dot v, m dot multiplied by v. So that is a force. What direction? Do we gain momentum or we lose momentum? Does it go inside or it go outside? We lose. If it's going out, then we lose. If it's coming in, we gain. So it's coming in at a negative value. Uh, you can you can think different way, right? Okay. Um, so if I write it as a positive sign, it has to be VTB minus VLTB. So this would be positive value, positive x. Right? Okay. This is mass shedding rate. Okay, mass shedding rate has the direction of go to minus z, right? Okay. What will be LTB? V, what is the direction of VLTB? Positive, right? Plus. So, if we just add the momentum or the force that acted upon this, I say minus that term. <coughs> I mean, minus the top part. In Zhang et al., we have the same thing, but they use minus x instead. So that term is negative value. Okay? Because it's VLTB minus VTB. What about momentum on this part? Okay. If I say, hey, we, we have mass coming in. Okay, we have mass coming in. So we have <coughs> x. I'm sorry. We have x which is a mass per unit time, plus velocity, actual velocity, which is Vs. Vs. Mass coming in. So with mass coming in, <coughs> do we kind of like gain the momentum, lose the momentum or something? It's, it's gaining momentum. Gain momentum. Because why? Mass coming in? Because there is energy coming. The energy coming into the system. So we have to plus, right? Plus X Vs. Whoa, 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 look. Hold and jump use minus. Did I do it wrong? So but this is not X. This is minus X. So minus X multiplied by minus sign is plus X V S. So it's the same as my version. All right. There's an equation for giant infrared for liquid part. Question? They did the same thing. Oh, oh, okay. Explain a little bit more. You see the red part over there? H, A, P, little V. We can have relationship from that X relationship. Substitute that in. Then the second term can be instead of Vs, we have that instead, okay? Let's take a look at it. Rho L stay the same. HLLS, it change to HLTB. HLAP stay the same. VLTB minus VTB is new. So this part is new, which is come from here, right? Okay. So this means <coughs> they keep that term, Vs minus Vtb, because they stayed over there with that minus sign. But <coughs> HLSAP, we change it to this term. Um, 
You like this way? Use the relation of x. Oh, I missed something. It's because the other term, the second term is also at. In, in, in the first equation? In the first equation. The second term? Yeah. This, this term. Oh, this term is. is added to the combine, right? Yeah. Combine with that. Okay. They do something, okay. It combine with that and use this expression, then you get this one. Alright? Mm. I think if you already write in your sheet sheet, I'm not gonna put it in your exam. If you don't write it, I'll put it in the exam. How about that? <laughs> I never know you write it or not. Okay. Rearrange it, do some math, I get this. Delta P over LF. You go to some expression. This is momentum balance in the field zone. Okay. I don't think you have enough space to write all this. Yeah. Okay. So I think you better study this one. All right. For the gas phase, we do the same thing. The top part, the force from liquid pulling backwards. So I have minus tau I S I L F. Okay. The top part over there is have friction, so it's minus sign T C S C L F. They use the word core because later on they say gas core will can have entrainment. Momentum from the top uh, one and two is the same, except you change ho up to alpha or alpha equal to one minus ho up. Okay. What about the momentum that going in? So the momentum that going in is what? Xg, Xg multiplied by uh, Vs. Do we have that? We have Sg and we have, um, what is this one? This part is not Xg but it's minus Xg. Multiply by with minus one is like plus, okay? So that's momentum in. What about at the end? That's momentum going out. Momentum going out is what? Um, same thing. Xg. Okay, we have minus Xg. So this term, Vtb is greater than Vgtb. So this is minus S Xg. Okay, that is minus Xg and multiply by velocity. Good. The rest is the same. Do some, a little bit mathematic trick, combine those terms, eventually they get that, do some math, get that. All right? No more question yet? Oh, you have a question. This math part, you have to go back home and do it by yourself. Okay? I did it already through the slide. It's your choice to review it or not. All right, we have two equations. They do combine momentum equation. Cancel this term, this term. Rearrange it, get a final form like that. This is the one that you should be able to get. Starting from drawing the picture. Okay, how long does it take to do this? Five minutes, because you already put it on your sheet sheet, if you have enough space. Good. Five minutes mean five points. But in this case, the derivation is similar to what has been done before, like using a differential form, you get the same thing. What is the difference between this model and... The right question that I would ask myself is, what is the difference between this one and combined momentum equation in Titan Doppler? It's the same thing, it's the one in the film zone. What is not the same is that in Tidal Doubler, there's no mass picking up and no shedding. So there's, more, there's no momentum gain due to x v s and there's no momentum loss due to x v l t b. But this one has. That's the difference. But it's a momentum balance in the certified zone, okay? But it has that x term. That's the only different. The rest is the same. Okay? And it becomes new model. 
Because what? Not everyone can think about it that way. And not, not many people solve it to begin with. All right, we do the combined momentum equation. There's a beautiful thing in this combined momentum equation. It's unified in the sense that if we say, hey, you know what? I want to use this equation for a stratified flow. What do I do? Just say uh, Sometimes I have the term about LF, right? So stratified flow means LF go to infinity. So slab flow, if it is slab flow, I don't have to do anything. I just copy equation one by one. I copy this one. Okay, it's this term minus thing. I copy this term. Okay. Oh, it becomes this term. I don't have to do anything. I group it together. So this is equation for slab flow. Okay. Is this equation enough as a combined momentum equation for slab flow? Yeah, it is in the film zone. It's half pink up red through the X thing. Right? So let's say LF go into infinity. So that is infinity, some number divided by infinity equal to zero. So that term gone, right? It becomes zero over there. Or anything that have divided by LF becomes zero. The rest stay. So you get this equation. Ta-da! This equation good for stratified flow, even though we take originally from snark flow. Okay. Question. No question. 